Well, welcome back, friendo. So I will be demonstrating. This will be a part two of uh, I'm drawing Gomez and Morticia as today's warm up. Uh, the speed is increased of this uh, demonstration by about 50% if you want to go back and slow it down. And I forgot to mention last time, uh, obviously there's no music. Uh, I will look into adding music, because I imagine this would be very sleepy, like a Bob Ross type of commentary, for which I apologize this time. Uh, you can open a new tab and add any kind of music you like. I like, there's a... Uh, musician named New Job S. It's a lo-fi, chill hop kind of guy. He did the soundtracks for Samurai Champloo. I was listening to Love Sick Part 1, if you want to follow along earlier. And that goes very nice with watching boring illustrations. But enough about me. Let's go back to the drawing. Um, we're drawing Gomez now. I'm doing this from memory. I looked at a little bit of uh, reference. And I also did the Morticia from memory, by the way. I forgot to mention. There's a lot of things I forget to mention. And right now I'm sort of putting together a... In the sketch phase, you're sort of looking... I say this often enough. I'm looking for the image. It's like fooling around with a piece of clay. And I'm sort of seeing what the colors are telling me, or in this case, what the values are telling me. I like to put an under, underneath the sketch, you'll see there's a layer underneath it. It's like a light gray, maybe a 20% gray. And uh, that allows me to add light as well as shadow because most images are not, uh, I mean, white is a very strong color. And if you start thinking of white as a color, as opposed to the default, you know, like a sheet of paper, um, you start thinking about things like value in a different way. And that took me many years to get comfortable doing that. But once I started, that was kind of life changing. So you'll notice I start with a dark gray canvas, no, a light gray canvas. And then I start adding darks. So say I have the pencil tool, I'm adding shadows because really all outlines are just strong shadows, right? Like the outside of a head, a jaw, nostril, the outline of the eyes, the shape of the lip. That's just shadows, really strong shadows. So lines don't really exist, but I'm looking for shapes now. So I'm fooling around with what I think Gomez might look like. Uh, not based on any actor right now. I guess Raul Julia was the strongest uh, Gomez that I know from the old movies from the 90s. And he has a sort of sinister, very mischievous, almost Dracula-ish, but like he's very playful, passionate, like a, a crazy Spanish man or something. Um, yes, welcome to my lair. So I want to have a little bit of grandiosity in his pose, whereas Mortish is more uh, subdued and... Uh, obviously seductive and stuff, but he is more, ha, ah, welcome. He'll have the rose in his teeth. I had it earlier, uh, and then I deleted it, because now I want to focus on his face. I'll add the rose back later. Let's see. So in this piece, I decided to put the light underneath him just to do something different. The other piece, the light was above her. Um, so I'm playing with, are they called planes in, in the painting world? I'm playing with the planes of his face. Sort of where the shadows would fall if the light was underneath him. And one of the first times in my life I ever noticed that was in the movie Hook. Um, Robin Williams had a light underneath him. And he was chilling with Tinkerbell, I think. He was still wearing his normal civilian clothes. And I always remember there was a light underneath him. And it made him look like the glasses, the shape of his glasses made him look like he had huge eyebrows. And I always thought about that. And I still think about that when I do light from underneath a character. But these are things that you notice as a kid and you don't know why you notice. But many years later, I think about where to put light all the time 
and I don't think it's kind of a lost art these days. Movies are so well lit. It's almost like they're too well lit to the point where you can't feel the scene anymore. I don't even know how to describe what I'm trying to say. Um, old movies chose lighting based on how will it... Is there something subtle in the scene that we can communicate through the lighting? If the light's underneath him, it's it's like... He is, uh, he is positioned above it in this grand... We, it's like if we're the light, we're looking up at him, which makes us feel smaller and makes him feel bigger. I'm adding the rose because I think the key to his character is this psychotic romance. He's obsessed with his wife, as any good man should be. But not in a creepy way, but in a romantic way. Like, you are my queen. <laughs> so at first I have his shoulders down, but soon I'm going to be uh, raising them. Adding a little bit of shadow to the nose. And now I'm thinking about... I haven't done the top shape of his head yet, which is surprisingly difficult to do, especially when a character has their uh, hair slicked back. Because the silhouette of a character, including the top of their head, is always very... It says a lot about them. If his hair is slicked back, that means he's very confident, I think. Like he's exposing himself. Whereas if someone's hiding behind their hair, that means they're shy, maybe. And this is not a shy character. So I'm always thinking about their personality as I'm drawing. And maybe that's a tip for anyone who wants to think about drawing. Everything from the pose to their expression, to the lighting, to the composition of the piece, maybe they all can support if you're trying to tell a story with a single image. I think that's one of the strengths that people uh, comment on my stuff, is they, they seem to notice uh, the characters are very emotive, and most people, let's say most lay lay people, don't really know a lot about art and all the uh, thinking that goes into, I don't know, you look at an image for maybe five, ten seconds at most, and a picture's worth a thousand words, right? So... You want to put a thousand words worth of work into an image that someone looks at for only a short amount of time. So we as the illustrator are uploading a ton of value, like a zip file, uh, to create an image that communicates a lot of information to somebody very quickly. And hopefully they have a nice emotional reaction to our piece. And that's the the craft of illustration, I suppose. By this point, I think, I don't know if it's clear, um, if it's visible, but I, uh, I was getting tired. Like, as far as warm-ups go, I was getting tired. Like, it's time for a break. So I'm kind of speeding along. This piece only took a half hour, as opposed to the Morticia, which took an hour. So... I guess that would have meant that I'm either warmed up and I'm ready to start my day. Today I'm going to be drawing a She-Hulk comic. Uh, I think. I might have to look at some reviews of episode one before I do it. That's, uh, maybe I'll do a video of that too. I don't know. This is all very new to me. And uh, if there's any uh, things that you want to know about as you're watching this and you have questions please uh, comment and let me know because I'm not sure what a viewer uh, wants. I mean, I kind of can guess. But uh, I want these videos to serve, you know, serve the, the student or the curious bystander. I don't know. But I, I, I definitely am not doing this to satisfy my own vanity. I can assure you this is really embarrassing, actually. 
when people can see all of my mistakes and my slow process and even hearing my stupid voice I don't have anything interesting to say so I'm trying to fill fill the time maybe it would be better if I didn't talk I don't know if so you can tell me that too it won't hurt my feelings I mean it'll hurt my feelings a little bit but it would hurt my feelings more if I was boring and people were too nice to tell me I was boring. So. Feelings. I like that shadow a lot on the bridge. Now this is the time when I add dramatic lighting towards the end. Once the figure has been solidified. That's when we can use dramatic depth, colors, highlights. You can see I'm blending out all my pencil strokes just to make it look a little more finished. But I don't always blend out my pencil strokes because A, I'm lazy, and B, I think I mentioned this in the other video, it makes the piece look like it has been worked on by a human hand as opposed to computer generated or something. I don't like pieces that are too polished in general because they look robotic they don't have the human touch I think that's why the impressionists and I talk about them all the time I'm sorry I think that's why they were popular they you could see their strokes and even people who don't paint can look at their paintings and say oh I can probably do that if I practiced and that, uh, that adds value to a piece. So maybe that's a reason not to use digital in the future. I don't know. Now I'm looking for an opportunity to get a nice selection behind him. To add a light. To give his figure just a little more depth. And uh, what's the opposite of depth? The highlights make them come towards us, and the shadows make his face recede. And we do the same trick with color. I'll do the color tutorial sometime, but the principle is the same. When we add colors, like cool colors, blues, greens, purples, those colors tend to recede, and warm colors tend to go to the foreground. And we can use that when we compose our panels, To, uh, to guide the eye. It's sort of like how a bird will like pre-chew food. Yeah, those highlights are great. That's good. That really brings it to life. And you can see it's only a few strokes, but the under picture, if the under picture wasn't there, those strokes wouldn't have been as strong. So for a 30 minute piece, it's not bad. I actually want to start working faster as I continue in my career. I don't think working on this for another two hours would really uh, increase an audience's enjoyment. We're adding highlights on the eyes and then lowering the opacity just a little bit to just draw, pull a little bit of attention to the eyes. What else do I do? I forget. I only drew this 20 minutes ago. I don't remember what I did. Ah. Moving the flower to the corners of the mouth. Cleaning up underneath. Not a big deal. I'm using the uh, Alt button as an eyedropper tool, if anyone's curious. And you can see I'm using my one of my preferred brushes is just a flat brush. And the other brush I use almost all the time is a round hard round uh, basic brush and maybe I'll do a, a full thing of what brushes I use someday and I guess we're getting close to the end because now I'm just looking for little details to clean and I call them splinters if there's anything in the image that my eye gets caught on like a splinter that's what I clean up towards the end 
So I zoom out, zoom in constantly. And I guess, yeah, I'm just finishing on the areas where I think the eye should be pulled towards the most. Like even babies, they look into your eyes. It's fascinating how the face, like even from birth, we are drawn to certain features of the face. And I guess that's it, more or less. Adding some details, now, by now, if you've been following along, it takes about an hour or something like that to get warmed up. I don't do it every day, but it's a good little exercise to build your portfolio, build your confidence. Um, and I am, uh, let's pretend that we're in a dojo, you know, and I'm the sensei. I would insist that all of my students draw and, you know, upload in air quotes something new every single day, every day. Maybe, maybe some days you do something that you don't want to share, but you have to draw something at least every day. Um, so I guess part of the reason I'm doing these videos is because I want to encourage people to see the process. It's nothing to be scared of. You don't have to show your work. And as you can see, my stuff isn't like the most polished or anything. But um, embarrassment is, is such a bad thing when you're trying to become a professional and even when you are a professional. So I, too, am getting over my embarrassment of hearing my voice so that I have to record these silly videos. Uh, but let's all practice together, I think. Uh, if you learned anything, great. If you just enjoyed this, I'm very glad. Um, if you guys want to support my stuff, uh, Patreon link will be below uh, on Twitter, I'm gprime85, Instagram, and um, well, that's it. Leave a like, etc. Thanks for your support. I'll be announcing some cool stuff over the next couple of weeks, and I hope to see you back at this channel soon. Thanks.